Hi everybody, uh, as promised, I will uh, uh, introduce you uh, a little breakdown about this missiles explosion that I did. It's uh, an exercise that I did for the amazing course at uh, Rabelway with uh, Urban Bradesco and uh, uh, I will go through the setup for Niagara about these uh, uh, systems. I tried to get an explosion uh, as much as possible volumetric. You can uh, watch the you can watch it uh, around, and uh, it keeps uh, his volumetric look. And uh, let's go through the system. So basically, all the explosion is organized. Uh, with three main uh, emitters, or better to say, three main systems, uh, Niagara systems. Uh, let's start with the missiles, or uh, let's say, let's start with the explosion. I have different version of the explosion, but uh, let's see this one. So basically, uh, I, I will show you the different uh, um, systems and then I will go through them. This is the main explosion. Then um, we, um, all the, the setup is uh, quite optimized. I will show you uh, a little script that I did uh, for optimizing the call uh, of the particle, especially when you have, for example, missiles that start uh, in a close position each other, it can add to some overdraw in smokes. But uh, don't uh, look at this. This part of the smoke is not optimized at all. I will show you how it works. Basically, it's a point cache. Uh, they are points affected by uh, smoke simulation. I think it can be sustainable, but uh, there should be much less point than uh, than the one that there are actually. So uh, don't look at this part because it's basically not optimized at all. The other stuff are quite uh, optimized. So um, the main explosion is really simple. It has uh, uh, one. Basically, uh, there are three explosions combined. The main one, that is this one. Then we have a secondary one, is this one. And we have a third one, that is that one. Combined, they look like that. Uh, I will uh, basically here you don't see I would add a depth fade for the ground in the shader it's very fast I will show you maybe how to do it but uh, I, I just forgot because you don't see uh, pretty much this area uh, but uh, I think it's something that can be done uh, then there are the flashes that is um, is an emitter with very short state. As you can see, its loop duration is once uh, set to 0 0.2 uh, with a spawn rate of 20. And basically, they are different flashes that gives this introduction. And as you can see, all the emitter are offset except this one. This one is the smoke because it, it starts before. Uh, and then there is the the smoke that is the one not op optimized and as you can see this is quite a good example on how to import uh, from Udini basically um, they are points advected by uh, a smoke and exported as point cache in uh, for Niag as a Niagara point cache, it's quite easy, very fast to, to set up inside Udini. Uh, and of course, now here I can change the point, or, or I can maybe create a scratch pad to delete 
or not render uh, some point. But uh, I mean, the easiest solution is to optimize them inside the uh, Udini. But uh, I mean, this is a disclaimer. This part is not, uh, let's say, game ready because it, it has a lot of, of point. It has quite much point, not a lot, but uh, I think it's too heavy. Uh, this part should be optimized, but uh, I mean, it was, I, I did quite fast all the system. So it's something that I want you to be aware that this part uh, should be improved. Uh, except from that uh, is uh, rendered with the, the, a smoke loop material. I will show you how it, uh, it's made. It's pretty easy. And as you can see, if we put everything together, we have our explosion. That looks uh, that I tried uh, to have something that can be seen by different angles. And uh, I mean, it remain uh, effective in the different uh, angles. And I'm quite happy of the result. Um, then uh, there is uh, the missile system. Uh, it's made with a little bit more emitter, but basically we have some flash. Uh, the flashes are the same of the explosion, simply those are smaller and those Oh, a bug. Sometimes there are some bugs. But, uh, those are smaller, um, but the, it's the same principle. Basically, uh, the texture, the flashes is a texture made in Photoshop. It's super easy to do. Uh, and uh, you have four different uh, uh, flashes and the system just take uh, one of the texture random um oh sorry uh, ju just take one of the texture random i think the the system is closed so basically we have those flash and those flash the, those flash are spawned when the, the missiles uh die basically the missiles that are this one it's a super simple mesh that i did uh, like in blender it's like a tube with extrusion uh the missiles have uh, uh to give uh, this movement i have a basic velocity cone uh, and uh, a custom attract. If we just switch off the custom attract, as you can see, there is uh, a curl to give uh, this little bit uh, random movement. And uh, the custom attract is very easy. I prefer the custom attract than uh, uh, the, the point force uh, because you can easily check uh, you, you can be very effective on what happens. Basically, the custom track takes the velocity, the aim position that can be set outside uh, is a variable that I exposed, uh, the position of the particle and create a general attraction force. Basically, you subtract, normalize to get the vector from the particle towards the aim position. And then we keep the original velocity and we add this to the velocity. Uh, of course, to have uh, the best result, you should store uh, this force that you add and uh, take it out at least 90% from uh, uh, the, the next frame, because in this way you continue to accumulate this and uh, but because we want it to be really fast, uh, I want uh, I want these effects really strong. It's okay. It's a very simple, just few nodes, and it works really well. 
So basically, this is just uh, applied. The general attraction force uh, um, is applied with a single float and a curve because we want uh, to have uh, in the first part of the, of the cycle of life of the missiles, this part you have the velocity in cone. So basically they go up and then custom attract uh, comes just right after. You can change, for example, this. Uh, and this of course will change the behavior of the missiles, but I think they work. To make them disappear, I just use kill particle in volume. There is a box, and the box is positioned in the aim position. So basically, if in the blueprint you just have, for example, an object and you want uh, the particle to uh, the, the missiles to, to reach this object, you can change this value and attach uh, it uh, to the transform of an object uh, you can move it uh, and the missiles will uh, uh, go towards him and will explode when th they reach him and of course you can change for example also the, the the size of the box so basically from this i generate two event location and depth and from that uh, i just uh, uh, use uh, those location and events in many other systems uh, there are missiles as you can see there are eject flashes that are this one this simulates the the, the first burst of the um, missiles so if you see together i don't know if i can probably not okay no the eject flash Okay. Then we have the embers. Oh, this probably I didn't use it. Ah, okay. Uh, to have this, I think I need also to have the missiles, probably. Let's see. If I can, okay, it's very slow now to do this, so I will just explain the different system because it's faster, I think. Okay, okay, we have ever so basically, we have the um, emission. The, the flashes here. We have also these uh, um, puff, puff smoke to simulate uh, the throw of the missiles. And uh, uh, another thing that I think could be heavily optimized are the embers, the ejection embers, uh, because uh, they can be, wow, they can be uh, optimized, I think, pretty much. We can have less uh, and they can be GPU, uh, but the embers are um, very simple. They just take the position of the missiles and uh, there is a, a velocity in cone and car noise force to uh, make them move. Uh, except from the preview video, maybe someone saw my upcoming uh, preview video for the breakdown. I just uh, made them more snapped to the to the missiles, uh, and then uh, there is uh, uh, the flame booster. Uh, basically, the flame booster is just uh, uh, the smoke, uh, and uh, you can scale the sprite size as you can see you can scale the sprite size to change the shape of the flame and uh, it's basically a smoke that is attached to the position of the missiles and uh, change the, the uh, how you say the um, 
the scale. Uh, this is because I, I repeat, I, I did quite fast. You can uh, also optimize it with a single uh, texture uh, burst, but I mean, um, this is not incredibly heavy, but uh, it can be further optimized, this part. Uh, and uh, the smoke embers, we already said, eject path uh, is this one. There are two different uh, eject paths uh, according to the texture sheet and uh, uh, the impact flash are the same, just uh, scaled up, the same of the start, scaled up uh, when the particle uh, collide. And I think the missiles are uh, done. There is uh, a smoke inside the smoke. Uh, this one, you can see that I have, uh, I should have scratch module. So basically this, uh, um, I just do this because, uh, um, okay, I, I do it in two different ways according to the place, but uh, uh, basically um, when you have the first burst, this one, When you have the first burst, you can see that this trail of smokes, when all the miss starts here, you have a lot of overdraw. So basically here, inside of the scratch module, I put a multiplier for the sprite size. And this multiplier uh, is driven by um, a curve that is uh, based on the emitter age. So basically, I just scale the, the the sprite sheet according to the age of the meter because all the missiles start at, in the, at the same moment. So basically, here you don't have um, you you are you don't render particles and they start here when the missiles are spreaded and so you have less overdraw. In another system, I just do the same. But uh, instead of uh, using the age, uh, I use the distance. So basically, you say uh, minimum and maximum distance, and between here, the, the particle are scaled. So basically, if you say uh, the minimum distance to render is uh, 10 meters, before 10 meters, they are scaled zero, and then they are scaled one. This is another way to do it. But I think we completed the missiles part. And the last is the debris. Uh, the debris have two different systems. One is uh, the, the rocky debris with collision. And the other one is a flash deb debris that is basically a smaller rock debris with the animated color inside uh, the dynamic parameter. And from this one, uh, there is uh, like a, a little smoke. Uh, you can see that if it's not very dense, but because it's optimized to avoid the overdraw as much as possible. And uh, um, this one have the same stuff that uh, uh, scale the emitters when they are too close to avoid too much particle in the same place. Uh, basically, those are the systems. Um, the materials, for example, of the main explosion, uh, the, the master material is a six point light smoke. So we have all the channel packed in Udini uh, to render. And uh, because the scene, uh, it's not dynamic, this one, uh, you can set the different uh, um, part according to the channel. So you can change the illumination by end. You can make it also uh, dynamic, but uh, 
I mean, I repeat, it was a fast exercise, so I wanted to have the control on it. Uh, and uh, okay, I think it's pretty much, I put uh, everything, I wrapped up everything inside the blueprint to, to test it. And uh, I will show you, I did the explosion both in the uh, legacy pyro workflow, let's say the one from Houdini uh, 17. Uh, let's... So basically, let's say the main explosion. I think was this one. So uh, I started from the sphere. Oh, um, yes, this uh, I used the, the uh, RBD workflow to, to inject the pump. The main explosion was. Uh, um, was made uh, with uh, in a more traditional way with the old pyro uh, system, mm, and but I have another one of the three explosion that is made with the latest um, pyro pyro blast pyro yeah pyro blast source. And then what I did is uh, after I created the, uh, the explosion, not, nothing uh, really complex. I just uh, created a very simple uh, shader in which uh, I just render the, the, no the standard density inside uh, Houdini. Uh, and uh, the six point light to generate the six point light is super easy because you can go outside here you, you can create a text or sheet node just to switch off render rgb lights and inside the obj it will create a rgb light rig you copy and paste it as i did so basically uh, you can uh, um, you can delete the texture sheet lab uh, node and you have the light rig and inside uh, it's already set up basically to, to work. What I do is, uh, I don't think here, okay, here I did. Here I divided negative and positive, but you can also have all the lights inside a single image plane. And then inside the, the compositor, you divide them in two different uh, sprite sheet. Uh, so basically, in Unreal, uh, you have, uh, let's say, for example, the main explosion. You have an emissive that is uh, uh, that uh, I created here in Udini inside. Uh, Inside the smoke shader, I just have the density render and I have a mask that is made with heat or temperature with some ramp to mask it and is saved in a uh, emissive parameter that I write down in a channel. So basically I have Whoa. I can pack it inside another channel. I have uh, this, uh, this emissive and then I have the negative and positive texture. And with that, basically I store all the stuff. 
I store the different channel for illumination in the shader you can tint the, the smoke as you want this is I think everything the debris is super simple material just uh, I just uh, use uh, a dynamic parameter to drive the emission can take a lot okay basically you have this to drive the emission and I think that's it um, most of uh, I show you the, the smoke loop is basically uh, a standard loop that I did inside Houdini. Is this one is a sim, and uh, after you have the sim, I just mask the sim with a noise sphere. And I create this so basically you have the possibility to have a seamless smoke loop with a time shift there is also a loop node but I prefer to do it by in this way and that's it okay I forgot little add very easy to do um, the debris I just uh, Basically, I didn't save that because it's super fast to do. I just uh, took a sphere, uh, set to polygon, and uh, I mean you can have a bigger frequency, but uh, then you, for a particle system, you need to strip down the the polygon, so it's not so important. I generally prefer a whirly because it gives you a little bit better the idea of uh, rock but uh, you can uh, you can set it as you want let's say like this then I just do an RBD material fracture and I wait it to compile okay uh, here you can see exploded view. Okay, we yeah. have. I added the detail inside. It's very detailed now, probably. Okay, too much. Let's say like two. Okay. Too much. Okay, then I assemble them with the pack geometry to be sure. Probably it's not something. Okay, sorry. Probably it's not something useful, incredibly useful, but I prefer to transfer all the attributes to be sure. Then I do a point triangle and I say if. There are a lot of better ways to do it, but uh, I will just show you the easiest way, the fastest way. Uh, to select. and just create so basically I can choose all the pieces then I just drop down a transform node and Ok, 
okay and zero well okay so in this way we can have all the different pieces but they are all in the center then I drop down a labs auto UV. Is it, it makes pretty good waveform. Good. Uh, you can check it here. Ah, okay, okay. This is my fault. You should unpack the object here. Okay, now it works. Okay, we have the UV island, but I don't understand why. Don't understand why we don't see the UV. There should be, however. I think there should be, uh, we can maybe Okay, ah okay, it was a problem of light as I thought, okay, we have the UV and uh, mm, we should do soften normal that is optimized for games in this way if you want you can make it more art and then we should put the transform that usually i just change the color like this and I call it to area because we scale it by 100 and you just drop down the row fdx output to uh, export the fbx so basically this was I think the fastest way to generate uh, different debris because uh, you simply scroll down sorry I forgot. You simply scroll down the mesh and you have different debris that that of course you can then you can create also small. Uh, you have uh, pretty much different uh, stuff. If you want to optimize a little bit more, I usually put. Remesh node yeah. and you can you can optimize it according to your needs if you want this is basically the debris generator I think I showed you all the the stuff. The I simply in the in the blueprint I just connect the the button to the different system and I put a little delay to make them start.
Okay, I hope uh, you enjoyed the, the breakdown and uh, let's see in the next uh, breakdown of uh, Niagara sketches.